Hello, my name is Betty and I welcome you to our online pondering service presented by the Dunville Worship Community where everyone who wishes to have a time of prayer, music, and pondering is welcome. You can find other spiritual materials such as music and Bible trivia on our Facebook page, Dunville Worship, and my YouTube channel, Betty Fox NL. As it says in Matthew 18:20, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. So be assured that God is here with us no matter where we are in the world. Now, let me introduce you to our circle of friends and then we'll warm up our, our voices by singing a hymn. As we light our candle within our circle of friends, we are, if I can get this thing lit, <laughs> we are reminded that Jesus lights the way along our spiritual path. And the circle of friends reminds us that we are not alone as the Spirit connects us one to another. Thanks be to God.
and will you join me in our call to worship? For God is here, calling us to be present and awake, calling us to a life restored and renewed in the Spirit, encouraging us through word, silence, and song. Collected, we come with skills, talents, needs, and questions, willing to experience this holy time once again. Then let us worship God. Will you join me in our opening prayer? Loving God, in response to your call, we have come to worship. We humbly worship you, and we reach out our hearts to show love and care to all. May our worship this day feed our work. May our pra praise energize our faith. May our prayers and songs feed our souls for the life of service. Amen. And now let's lift up our voice for our second hymn, which is More Voices 154, Deep in Our Hearts. confession. God of mercy, we confess that we are often confused about what it means to be a Christian, a follower of Christ. Sometimes we tell ourselves 
that is mostly about being nice, doing the best we can, not being any worse than the next person. We get upset if someone suggests that we aren't doing it right. We define this thing for ourselves and by ourselves. Thank you very much. In our more honest moments, we realize how shallow we may seem, how shallow we can be. Forgive us. Help us seek and follow the path of true discipleship. We pray in the name of Jesus, in whom you lived among us. Amen. And the one thing that we know for sure is that God is always graceful in forgiving our times when we don't quite live up to our expectation. Let us pray our words of insurance. We are not alone. Whatever our struggles, whatever our failings, whatever our sins, God stays with us and bears with us. The hands of the potter are always working the clay that we are. We are becoming what God wants us to be. Thanks be to God. Will you pray the prayer of illumination with me? Open our hearts to receive your word, O God. Move us past tiredness and complacency so that we might be drawn into the scriptures in a new way, a way that refreshes our souls and ignites our imaginations. Amen. Our scripture reading today is taken from Exodus 1st, beginning to read at verse 8. A new king came to power in Egypt who didn't know Joseph. He spoke to his people with alarm. There are way too many of these Israelites for us to handle. We've got to do something. Let's devise a plan to contain them, least if they if there was a war, they should join our enemies or just walk off and leave us. So they organized them into work gangs and put them to hard labor under a gang foreman. They built the storage cities and a dramas for the pharaoh. But the harder the Egyptians worked, the more children the Israelites had. Children everywhere. The Egyptians got so they couldn't stand the Israelites and treated them worse than ever, crushing them with slave labor. They made them miserable with hard work, making bricks and mortars and back-breaking work in the fields. They piled on the work, crushing them under the cruel workload. The king of Egypt had a talk with the two Hebrews midwives. He said, when you deliver the Hebrew women, look at the sex of the baby. If it is a boy, kill him. If it is a girl, let her live. But the midwives had far too much respect for God and didn't do what the king of Egypt ordered. They let the boy babies live. The king of Egypt called in the midwives. Why didn't you obey my orders? You've let those babies live. The midwives answered Pharaoh. The Hebrew women aren't like the Egyptian women. They're vigorous. Before the midwife can get there, they've already had the babies. God was pleased with the midwives. The people continue to increase in number, a very strong people. And because the midwives honored God, God gave them families of their own. So the Pharaoh issued a general order to all of his people. Every boy that is born 
drown him in the Nile, but let the girls live. Our Holy Scriptures. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Creator God, we give you thanks for your holy word. And now we ask that the words of my lips and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you this day. Amen. In our story, a new king takes over and it says that he does not know about Joseph. My initial questions are, how is it that he doesn't know about Joseph when Joseph was the one that led them through the years of lean times. My understanding is that a pharaoh is selected by the last pharaoh, which is usually the father. So how come this pharaoh doesn't know about Joseph and what he did for Egypt? Have you ever been in a job that you really like? It gives you great satisfaction and you look forward to going to work each day and then they change your boss. There is a different energy at work now. The new boss wants to change how things are done. Sometimes it's just a little thing, but it could also be a big change. The flow at work is not the same. You are no longer the happy camper you once were. Are all the new boss's ideas good ones? Most likely not, but most are just a change in procedure which upsets the flow. Does it make it better? Hard to tell unless you give it a try. But what if the change is against the law or against your principles? What do you do then? The midwives are faced with a dilemma. Kill the male babies, which they know is against God's wishes, or be faced with punishment from the new pharaoh. And we can see from reading the other things that the pharaoh had changed, he's not a real kind person. Faced with the two options, what would you choose? Follow what you feel God would want you to do? Or take the immediate safe action and do away with the male babies? Every day we are faced with such decisions. Drop a bill in a homeless person's cup or walk on by. Visit a friend in a nursing home or go shopping. Know that a clerk gave you too much change, but you put it in your pocket anyway. There are many times we are faced with choices. One that God would be super pleased with or the other that saddens God. What do we need to do to make better choices when we are faced with these competing issues? Do we need to study the Bible more? Do we need to take more time in reflections? What helps you to make the kinder choice. May God always help guide us in our decisions. Amen. Our third hymn is More Voices 171. Christ has no body now but yours. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands but yours, 
here on this earth. Yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion. But yours to heal the wounded world No hands but yours to soothe all its suffering No touch but yours to bind the broken hope of the people of God Christ has no body now but yours Thank you for all you do for others on your spiritual journey. May others know your love for Christ through your actions. Let us give thanks for our gifts that we have received. Let us pray. All that we have is from you, Creator. With these gifts we seek to be like you, creating a world where love is known sharing the goodness of beauty and kindness, blessing our neighbors with our faith in action. Bless our gifts, and may they be a sign of our co-creating ministry in your name. Amen. Our commissioning. Go into the world with the yoke of Christ upon you. A yoke Jesus promises will be easy to bear as you share with your neighbor wherever you can. Thanks for being here with us and be blessed this week and we hope to see you next week. Bye now.